survival rate for almost all forms of cancer is unchanged for the last four decades. That's pretty sad. Cancer remains man's number two killer, second only to heart disease. Little wonder that a victim of cancer like Mr. Marshall feels depressed. You see, the thing about a war, and, and, and this is a cancer war, wars are only profitable when you're fighting them. Let's face it, if, the, if cancer disappeared tomorrow, millions of people would have to retrain. I mean, this is a $200 billion a year industry that you're going to have to dismantle if the truth ever came out about what we would need to do. A lot of people ask, you know, why am I in Mexico? That's precisely why. Because I, I'm an American citizen. I live in San Diego. My kids went to school here. I would love to be able to do what I believe is correct in the country of my birth. My patients, a lot of them come from the U.S. They would like to be able to do what is, in their opinion, a, a good program to cure their disease pro problem in the countries of the birth, whether it be Australia, whether it be New Zealand, whether it be Canada, England, the U.S., doesn't matter. Um, unfortunately, we can't you know, get the health care laws changed. The war against cancer has been fought with one arm behind the back. And I would never go into the ring with a heavyweight champion of the world and fight with one arm. And yet, by restricting cancer research and cancer treatment to basically drug, surgery, radiation approaches, and not consider nutrition seriously, we've done a terrible disservice to all these people. So it's not that people are lying. It's not that the, everybody who works in the cancer industry is somehow an evil and wicked person. What we look at here is we're seeing that a lot of people are just doing what they believe is best. You can be as sincere and you can be sincerely 